Because I'm savage, a classy bougie, and ratchet, yeah, I'm savage. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, some of these songs today, anyway. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Can you straighten this up any at all? Will it stay up? I don't know. You know, you try and get things pushed in, and whatever, man. What'd you think of Guardo? Hey, anyway, I don't know. I don't, anyway, let's get let's get to it. This is the after fight afterthought, and some of you um, that have been around a lot, and I thank you for sticking around. I used to do these after every big fight, and we would uh, go into the fighters coming into the fight, and then after the fight, right? And then you have the after fight, which is usually the winner. The afterthought is the loser. So we'll go with the. Uh, for this one, we got to go with the afterthought on this. We'll start out, you know, you have Tony Ferguson coming in. 12-fight win streak, one of the hottest fighters in there, old El Kukui, you know, and uh, the boogeyman there. And he's uh, battering people left and right. You know, his style, the constant pressure, constantly moving forward, willing to take two shots to get one in, you know, and, and it overwhelms people and it changes people. Did a lot of uh, a lot of damage to a lot of fighters, and he was looking really, really good. And everybody want wanted you know the Khabib Nagamenov, and obviously that was for both fighters coming into this. I mean, you you got him now. He's he's thirty six, and then when you're talking about the uh, lightweight division, that's starting to get you know um, up in age for that for that weight, you know. Uh, usually lighter weights, the older you, uh, they age out a lot sooner because of the speed, because of a lot of things that you just can't bring into the game at that at those lighter weights. So he, he's coming into it, all the momentum in the world, everybody's behind him, really uh, pulling for him. Uh, very awkward fighter, uh, does, does a lot of uh, unorthodox stuff that, that you really just can't. Uh, uh, train or prepare for a lot of times. But he has some uh, horrible tells, and we will go over them uh, after this. Then we're going to switch over uh, we, Justin Gaethje, who won four in a row after two uh, blips there that he had on his, on his record. And this dude is destroying people. I mean, he's got 22 wins, 19 of them are by knockout now. It's uh, it's amazing what he's able to do with such short reach. It's kind of like Mike Tyson. Now, before anybody says anything there, I'm just saying Gaethje's at 5'11", has a 70-inch reach. Mike Tyson at 7'10 and chain, or 5'10", geez. Gaethje at 5'11". Having the 70-inch reach, or 71-inch reach, 70-inch reach, and then you go over to Mike Tyson, who at 5'10", had a 70-inch reach. So, or 71-inch reach. So you're looking there. Gaethje's reach was 70 inches. Tyson's was 71. So you're looking at that that reach, and it's it really stands out. You know, that he's got stumps for arms. Not really good for uh, any distance striking at all, but crazy deadly if you can get somebody in close. And he is really uh, amazingly well at counterpunching. And when you have a counterpuncher that is going to wait for you to make a mistake and is accurate, that's the key word, accurate, with that, and he throws with power. He throws from his heels, meaning he's hitting you with everything he's got. So you've got these fighters. He's got a good takedown defense. You know, well-rounded again, can wrestle. You know, they've got all this great stuff. I mean, I think he was Arizona State two-time champ. Anyway, he's, he's, he's got the papers. You know what I'm saying? So you got these two coming in there, and obviously the winner of that is going to be fighting Khabib.
they definitely have the strongest case to fight Nugabenov as any fighter out there. And to be honest, the one with the most to lose was Tony Ferguson coming into this fight. And I watched the fight, and as you're watching it, there are some things that start to stand out. One is Tony Ferguson keeps his left hand dangerously low, and he leads with his face. Now, what I mean by that is, is you've got fighters that come in, and when they're fighting, they're almost leaning forward, and their head is, in a sense, in front of where their hands are. He routinely kept his hands below his shoulders. Now, you can get away with this because it's a quick motion up to block any shots that might be coming in on you. But when your hands are below, there's so much time. By the time you're getting here, you're already getting tagged. You're already getting hit. And we saw that repeatedly in the Tony in that fight. If I was Tony Ferguson, I would fire anyone in my corner that had anything to do with boxing because they taught him nothing with that. You've got a man who has a 76 and a half inch reach, six inch reach advantage, and you have him shortening everything in, in there. When he throws his punches, Tony was throwing the punch out and then bringing his hand down and back slow. That is not how you throw a punch. With it, think of it as you're trying to steal something from someone. You're bringing it out and you're pulling it right back. As soon as you hit, you're automatically pop and you're pulling it back as fast as you can because you want to steal that hit from them. There was none of that with Tony Ferguson. Every punch he threw was a straight out a slow bring back and down. Every punch. And there were no feints. Never once. Never, I defy you to find a spot in there where Tony Ferguson threw a legit feint toward Gaethje to try and break up that brilliant counter-punching performance that Gaethje did. I defy you to find that. It wasn't there. Every single time he threw the punch and he wasn't throwing multiple combinations, it was a one or a one-two. And occasionally when he started throwing more, he was getting lit up and set on fire because of the punches coming out, coming down slow, coming out, coming down slow. No fake, nothing to, th nothing to throw off. Gaethje's timing. At all. Not once. And leg kicks, you might have seen a couple. But they were after the fact. You know, he started throwing some high leg kicks late in the fight. After damage had already been done by his, to his legs from Gaethje. Again, we look over at Gaethje with this. As the rounds go on, you can see him starting to throw more powerful leg kicks to take away any of the movement that uh, Ferguson might have had, that unorthodox approach. But the one thing that was, for as all the unorthodox as Tony Ferguson has, he is the most basic when it comes to actually throwing the punches. There are no feints. There is no level change as in intensity. They're, they're all the same. A lot of times you might throw out a, just a pawing jab, because you get the extra speed and you can kind of throw off somebody's offense and what they're planning because they have to defend that. So you can, you can throw out a soft and then come hard with, with the shot, you know, when you're firing it out there. But he didn't do any of that. There was no variation in the punches. There was no feints. There were no uh, uh, even like double jabs to kind of try and set up something. You didn't really see that. Anyway. As you, as you watch the accumulation build and the face physically change on Ferguson, you could just see it getting bad. And it could have been stopped earlier. You know, that was a great, great thing with Herb Dean in, in there and calling that off when he did because uh, the way he was shaking his head was almost like brain damage kind of 
concussive kind of stuff there with, with Ferguson toward the end. And so now when you look at that, you have Ferguson's own trainer now coming out and saying, uh, maybe he should retire. I don't know if that's the case. If, if I was Ferguson, again, I would fire anybody that opened their mouth about boxing ability from my team. I would fire them all and actually bring in some trainers that can actually, that actually boxed, that actually know how to at least throw from the upper body. Because the thing is, we can talk distance all we want, but he wasn't keeping that distance when he was throwing the punches. There was no get in, get out. He got in, stayed, got punched multiple times, and at times it looked like he was waiting to get hit. He had been hit so many times because he was getting timed. Why? Because he didn't throw any feints. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, I think if he gets a uh, true boxing trainer in with him to, to mesh with all the other stuff, he might have a shot. If he just incorporated feints into his game, he would improve so much more on the striking level. We go over to Gaethje. Gaethje did everything that he does amazingly well. I mean, he had Joe Rogan just freaking out on, on the thing. And that, that was pretty awesome to actually hear the punches hit and no crowd. You know, you could just hear everything. And that was, that was pretty awesome with that. But Gaethje came out. He stuck to the plan that he had. He didn't push anything. He let Ferguson come to him and he punished him every single time. He knew that when Ferguson threw a punch, that face was going to be left there. He didn't rush into things. He didn't play a distance fight. He was able to close that distance because Ferguson didn't do anything to create distance. So he, he was tailor-made for Gaethje's style. But I mean, 19 knockouts in uh, 22 wins. He's knocking dudes out left and right. He has mastered this. With, with the striking, and those leg kicks are crazy. But if you look at him, his legs kind of short, his arms kind of short, his torso looks like he could be six foot four. That's nothing against him. He, he'd probably pound me to the ground. I, I wouldn't want that. I'm old, man. <laughs> but I'm just saying with his build, the, the way you would fight him is to stay away. You know, you got to keep that distance. Throw the kicks, keep him at bay, hit and get out. Don't stay around to trade blows with this man because he's coming from the heels when he hits you. If you welcome, if you step into his world, man, you're going to be like one of those 19. You know what I mean? So, um, with, with it, it, it's amazing. The, the fact that he does that and Nogamenov, you know, maybe can be goaded a little bit into standing up. So you got to see that as uh, fireworks going off now for Gaethje. He just stopped what could arguably be the hottest person in the lightweight division and did it convincingly. There, were, there was no one out there going, hey, I think Ferguson won a round. No, that didn't happen. So now we see Ferguson whose own coach is questioning whether he's going to retire. Uh, definitely needs to fire anybody on his team. He's got to change some stuff. And at 36, that's going to be really hard to do. Doesn't It rarely happens. But I think the fighter in him, I think he's got a shot at that. I don't think he's done. But with Gaethje now, I, I definitely see Khabib as his next fight. There's talks about maybe a Conor McGregor type of thing there. And there might be something there. But Conor's all wrong for Gaethje. Connor keeps distance. Connor throws feints. Connor can box. Hey, not Floyd Mayweather level, but he's he's got skills. So Connor's all wrong for Gaethje. Nagamenov, you know, might be all wrong for Gaethje. Ferguson was perfect for him. So I I would definitely like to see Nagamenov fight. I would like to see the Connor fight, but whichever one it is, he needs to make sure he makes the most money possible out of that 
because the next fight I don't think will be as much. Because I don't see him beating a McGregor. I don't see him beating a Khabib. Okay? Anyway, that's uh, my after fight afterthought. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you like it, and have a fantastic day. Aguardo, thank you for contributing nothing to this. Mm-hmm. You're mad. You're mad. I don't blame you. I mean, I like Ferguson. I do. Whatever. Anyway, hey, it's a big ragu. I'm out. Keep punching.